Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I am one of the authors of Technic.com. Today, we'll continue our studies with SE Linux. In our previous lessons, we've looked at what SE Linux is and how to and why you should enable SE Linux. We've also looked at uh, the modes of SE Linux and how to switch um, to either permissive mode, enforcing mode, or totally disable SE Linux. So in today's uh, lesson, we're going to look at S Linux policy. So when we talk about S Linux policy, it is a set of rules that defines what kind of services or programs can access what kind of objects. And when I say objects, I mean files, directories, services, or ports. These rules are written by the application or program developer, and the developer will specify these rules in his program code. So you should not worry yourself about these um, policies. The only time you should worry yourself about it is if you want to um, change the policy. The developer already knows the the object um, file directories his applications will access to function properly. And um, if you want to, if you don't want that, prob probably you want to change the configuration. Then that's when you should um, begin to worry yourself about about the policies and say, okay. Um, I want to change this configuration and uh, um, changing the, the configuration or policies uh, requires understanding what SLinux context and um, booleans are. So let's um, start with the um, SLinux context. SLinux context is simply labels that are associated with um, objects, that is labels that are associated with files, directories, ports, processes, etc. Now, Everything on Linux has context. And to see the context of an object, be it file, directory, spot, you use the um, option Z with their simple listing commands. So for example, to look at the context of the files here, in this directory, we use ls hyphen option Z, right? Okay, let me make a long listing, All right? So, so this um, are the context of the files in this directory. So you can see um, this line. This are the context, and context uh, um, is divided into four parts. We have the user part, which is which ends with um, underscore u. We have the road part, which ends with underscore R. We have the and we, we have the type part, which ends with underscore T. And we have the sensitivity sensitivity part. To see the context, the context, sorry, the context of um, the slash TMP directory, right? You use the same command on TMP. So on slash TMP, you can you can see the context of this um, directory. Let me make my screen bigger. Okay, so we can see the context of this directory. Okay, so we can see the um, user part. We can see the role part. This is the type part, and this is the sensitivity part. This context are uh, are used to make access control decisions. So to look at the context of, um, of processes, use the command PSAUX with the Z option. And then you can see the context of all processes. If you want to um, look for a particular process, for example, all right, say you want to look for um, the Apache process, right? You can use the grep command for that. And you can see the context associated with um, Apache. You can see the user context, the user part here. You can see the role part. And this is the type part. And this is the sensitivity part. So this is how you see the context um, associated with um, a process. If you want to see the context associated with the port, use the normal 
um, listing command for port, then um, zip, the, zip, the, the zip option, then you can use this to open. And it lists all the context associated with port, right? So you can see the context, you can see um, the user part, the role part, the type part, and the sensitivity part. So this is the security context that is associated with um, this port. Now, what's the name of the port? One, one, one. Okay, so that's how you see the context associated with the um, object. So in this um, tutorial, we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to start from the type context. The type context is the context that is mostly modified when it comes to um, SD Linux troubleshooting. So let's understand the type context with um, some examples. But before we do that, let's um, take this keynote. It's essential we we'll, um, take this keynote. And number one is there is an SD Linux security context and attributes for every location or path on the system. We've already established that here when we run the command um, this as against TMP to look for the to look for the context of the directory then we can um, we can do this right and then we can set the context of the TM TMP directory and the type context is TMP underscore T the second keynote you should um, know is when you create a file or directory, the appropriate SLNL security context and attributes for the location the file or directory was created will be associated with it. So for example, if I go to um, slash TMP, right? And then um, when I list the context, the context, sorry, in this, in this location, right? You can see the um, context, the user TM, TMP, T, user TMP, T, and all of that. So if I decide to create um, a file in this location, for example, or a directory, let me just create an empty file and I say touch your technique five, right? And I decide to list um, the context again. You can see that technique five, five as taking the context, um, as automatically taking the context in this location. The top keynote is that SLNS just knows how to label the files or directories, so you do, you do not have to bother yourself about it, um, except in the advent where you need to do some special configuration, like um, troubleshoot SLNS or change labels or context. The fourth keynote is when you couple a file or, or a directory to a location, the file automatically inherits the um, SLNS security context and attributes of the location it was copied to. So you can see the um, context, the type context of Technet5 to be to be um, user underscore TM, TMP underscore T. So if I copy te Technet5, five, for example, to slash boot, right? Oh, sorry. Technique five, right to slash boot, and I go to slash boot, and I list the content here. Slash boot. So you can see that um, Technique five has automatically taken the context in this location. The fifth keynote is. When you move a file or a directory to a location, the file or directory does not inherit the SLNOS security context and attributes of the new location. Instead, it moves with, with its old location's context. Now, this is Technet5, right? If I decide to move Technet5 to slash TMP, okay, so let me move Technet5. To slash TMP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, so you can see that um, when I moved the file, the, te the technique file, file file also came with the um, with the context of the location it was coming from. So it would not inherit the context of of the location where where it's been moved to, right? So this is um, a, a very important keynote you should um, take note of. And the sixth, the sixth keynote is that any unconfined context is not limited by SLinux. All right, so in the next lesson, we'll look at understanding SLinux type context with examples. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and bye for now.